So let's talk about Z remesher and why it's useful. In this video, I'm going to be Z remeshing this egg monster. So we have a high and a low file. These are both just a decimated model. So a decimated model is a model that you run through the Decimation Master plugin. And what it does, it reduces the detail of the model. And you use that for baking. I'll go over baking in a future video. Uh, but in this video, we're going to be focusing on Z remesher. So go down to geometry with your model selected, click on Z remesher, and you can see here there's all these different settings. Uh, I'm not going to go over every setting, uh, but the main setting, like the main settings, uh, target poly count, this is how detailed the model will be. Uh, higher means more dense, more polygon, like more polys. Um, it'll retain more of the detail. Lower means more simplistic and you'll lose more detail. Uh, keep creases, it'll try to keep like creases in the model. Uh, detect edges, it will try to detect edges and keep those as well. These are pretty useful. Uh, the groups thing, freeze groups, keep groups, uh, this has to do with poly groups. That's something I'll go over in a future video. That's, I would say, more intermediate than beginner. Uh, clicking on Z remesher just runs the model through Z remesher. Uh, adaptive size and curve strength. Uh, curve strength adjust the like adaptive size ad adjusts the size of certain areas. So if this is higher or lower, if it's higher, it will try to make large, simple areas uh, less dense. So it'll make them with fewer polys and it'll try to concentrate the details. You can leave it at 50 and 50 and play around with it based on what you want. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna go to detect edges, keep creases, I'll try it at five. This is like roughly 5K, so let's hit Z remesher. Let's see what result we get. Now, if you lose a lot of your like micro details, that's fine because you can bake those back in to the model. So right now it's just running through the process, as you can see up here. And then once it's done, we'll see if the result looks good. And sometimes there are some like little issues that you can smooth out or adjust, and I'll go over that too. Okay, so here is the Z remeshed version. It's at 12k polys, which isn't bad. And you can kind of look around and see what it looks like now. Let me turn that lock the Y axis. So you always want to check for little artifacts or errors. So like if you, for example, see like a hole in the model, you can usually smooth that out just by like doing like a little smoothing by holding down shift and like clicking or using your um, stylus. But you always want to inspect it after Z remeshing. So this looks really close to the original model. You can actually turn on the line fill so you can check out what the model actually looks like in terms of its geometry and placement of polygons. So you can see the adaptive strength effect here where this is dense. There's more polygons and there's fewer on these large flat shapes. And it did detect edges, so it like retained those sharp edges we sculpted earlier. This model is part of a tutorial series, even though this is a standalone video. It's still kind of related to that series. Uh, so this result is decent. Uh, it's probably too high if this were to be like a prop, but if this were to be like a creature, this isn't horrible. This is a little weird right there. Uh, you can always smooth things out like that if you want. Uh, but uh, like if you were to animate this creature, you probably wouldn't sculpt its face in this way. So this would probably be a prop. So let's see if we can reduce the... Let's, let's see what it looks at 2K. Uh, now usually it's, it's it tries to target it at like 2K. Like that's what the 2 is for. Or like it's right, right over here. So this is like trying to put it at 2K polys. But it, it usually is a little bit above it. Depends on how complex the model is and what it can do. But you can put a decimal in as well. So if you want it at 2K polys and, it, and it's like a... I don't know, five or six, which is probably what it'll end up at. You can do like 0.5 or 0.3 to reduce it even further if you want to simplify it. So let's see how it looks, it's almost done. Another reason why decimation is good is you can Z remesh faster. All right, so now this is at 5K, almost six. So they see this little thing right here. Sometimes that can just be like a thing in ZBrush, but you can smooth out stuff like that Just by like making your brush really small and smoothing out some of the edges 
it's really useful to know because when you import that into a game engine, you might have these little issues. So that's why I wanted to show this. So let's increase this. Let's try to smooth this out. So what is happening is essentially like the ang or the the polygons are like almost folding on each other, creating like the illusion of a hole. Sometimes the actual hole does appear, and then you have to do something about it. We can see here there's uh, something going on right here. You always want to check all angles of your model. The big flat areas will usually be fine. It's it's generally where things meet and overlap, especially if they're like close, like right here, like where the nostril goes in. And you can, of course, adjust the lighting if you use basic material. Cer certain materials have lighting down here that can be adjusted, others don't. So like matte cat gray does not have, you can't adjust the lighting. So something right there. That actually might be okay, let's see. You can always check the export too. Let's put it back to like there. Just go around look for any issues. There's one right there, I see. Depending on how you are Z remeshing, you might have these issues or not. The more detailed it is, usually the more issues you'll have. And another thing to note too, uh, you can compare to the original model. So like, let's say we just turn these both on, you can kind of see the differences and you can turn on where is it? transparent. So then you can kind of see how they compare. Sorry, ghost, there we go. You can kind of check it out. So you can see like how the model has changed. Cause it will, sometimes the shape slightly changes depending, like especially if you're going down in detail. Uh, let's turn these off. And you actually can obviously sculpt on this. So like, let's say for example, uh, you want these, these parts here to be more detailed. You can actually just straight up sculpt onto this because it's still just, you know, a model. So if you want to sculpt this in more, that is something you can do. And you can also use Z Modeler on this, which is something I'm going to cover in a future video, which is like ZBrush's 3D modeling software. Uh, this is probably good enough to use. I'll probably smooth out some parts down here. Because once we bake onto this, it should look pretty good. So we'll cover that in the next video. So to export this, you would just go to Z plugin. You can do F FBX import export, and then just export it. Uh, you usually want to do the visible sub tools and make sure it's visible and selected. And this, it doesn't have to be selected, but it can be confusing if you're like this. Like if this is not, if it's visibility is toggled, but it's selected, you might think this exports with it, but it doesn't. Whichever one's visibility is toggled when you export visible. So you'd export this. Uh, the next video, we're going to be going over how to do kind of like a quick and dirty UV method for ZBrush. This is more so something you should do for props if you're just trying to get some content made quickly, but probably not for like actual characters that are gonna be very detailed or things that are gonna be really detailed. So thanks for checking this out. Definitely like and subscribe if you found this useful. Drop a comment, let me know what you think. And also feel free to suggest any 3D videos. Uh, certain software I probably won't cover because I'd have to learn it, uh, like 3ds Max and stuff like that because I just don't use 3ds Max. Uh, but the guy I work with who also uh, works on this channel and makes stock 3d with me he very likely would cover stuff for like blender uh, stuff for like animation i'm more of like zbrush and like texturing and substance designer which i'm learning currently and have been for the past like year or so but yeah that's it for this one thanks for checking this out and i'll see you in the next one